Apparently another 787 had a rat deploy in flight. Let's take a, well, hold on. I forgot my red lanyard. Oh, hey, thanks. Well, I actually didn't forget my red lanyard. I kind of want to have an excuse to explain why I wear this red lanyard. I have 10 grandchildren and three of them have a terminal disease called vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And those three kids, it's VEDS for short, um, those three children got accepted into the Make-A-Wish program, I guess it was a little over a year ago, about the time we started the Captain Steve channel. And if you notice on some of my older videos, I don't wear this red lanyard. It was about the time that the kids went down on their Make-A-Wish trip to Disney uh, that Make-A-Wish gave them a lanyard, a special lanyard that all the kids wore and the whole family, in fact, wore. And every character at Disney, every employee down there recognized the Make-A-Wish lanyard. And they treated the kids like princes and princesses. It was unbelievable how they fawned over these kids and made that week in their life absolutely special and I got to thinking about a lanyard and I thought hey maybe here at Captain Steve we could design a lanyard that I would connect with my sick grandchildren with and uh, so we chose the color red together uh, because it, it matches with the vascular part of the VEDS that they have and uh, they love Captain Steve so they do the Captain Steve fly stuff safe stuff all day long they love their poppy. That's the other name that they call me. And so we designed this together and I wear it all the time I, in unity with those grandchildren. And in fact, if you notice, if I'm ever on with like Megan Kelly or Piers Morgan or CNN or one of those programs, I still have the red lanyard on, even if I'm not wearing my uniform. And that's for my grandkids. So here at the Captain Steve channel, we believe that we should be using our public platform for good to better our fellow man, not for ridicule. So having said that, we're starting a fundraiser and the second of our my grandchildren with VEDS has their Make-A-Wish trip coming and they're going to go to Disney as well at the end of September. So for the month of August and the remainder of the month of September, we're going to run a fundraiser for what we think is the greatest organization on the planet, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So in the, the description down below, you can find a link. If you'd like to make a contribution, please be generous. We would love you to, to support Make-A-Wish. Remember, here at Captain Steve, we will never ask you for money directly, but we will point you to organizations that we think are, are really terrific and do a great job. Now, we'll wrap up the fundraiser at the end of September when I return to Disney with the kids, and we'll make a report from there uh, and let you know how we did. But our offer now to you and to Make-A-Wish is this. We at Captain Steve will match the first $5,000 of contributions to this cause. So if you raise more than 5,000, we'll match it a dollar for dollar. And I'm hoping we blow the lid off this thing and do something really, really terrific for kids that have a terminal diagnosis. So now you know about the red lanyard. Now you know why I wear it. And uh, yeah, so thanks for indulging me on that. Now, what happened here with Latim? So uh, let's watch the video and I'll show you why this rat deployed. Well, actually, six of the feet. And uh, request my is keep to the five zero. <laughs> so this is LATAM. LATAM, I think, is a Chile's uh, national carrier uh, out of South America. And uh, they have, they're flying 787s, and they have a rat deploy around 12,000 feet. So they're climbing out of LAX on their way back down to Chile. And uh, this rat deploys. And so you know, they ask him, is everything okay? And he says, yeah, everything's okay. No, everything isn't okay. Uh, in fact, it's not normal for a rat to deploy in flight. Uh, my understanding now on a 787 is there's really only three reasons, and we'll get into those in a minute because uh, they say later on uh, what the reason was. But let's see how they handle this rat deploying because this makes for a, a, a pretty much a calamity uh, in flight. Hello, I'm sorry, happy. Everything's okay. Um, we have a Romeo Alpha Unlock it at this time. Okay, I like the way this guy describes it. He says we have a Romeo Alpha Tango. He uses the phonetic language of aviation so that he's very clear in what he's saying because he it might be lost in his accent a little bit with this American controller. So he, he spells out rat uh, unlocked at this time. So when he said everything was okay, they were probably still trying to figure out what happened. You will get a, a, a light on your uh, ICAST screen in front of you that says Ram Air Turbine. Right. And we use, OK, and then you'll hear it because that Ram Air Turbine screams. It's a little propeller about this big and it goes almost supersonic. 
It just really, really is loud. And then the other thing that happens up in the cockpit is the phone next to you starts ringing off the hook. Everybody in the back, every flight attendant in the back is wanting to let you know that there's some God awful noise in the back of the airplane and they don't know what it is. So they'll call up and you'll hear ding, 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 ding. And you pick it up. And like, yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. I, I don't know what it is. I can hear it too. All right. Hold on. You look and you see it's a rat on the screen. So now you got to continue to fly the airplane. Remember that's, there's this thing called the shock effect. When something happens, they train all of us to say my aircraft and that breaks the shock effect. So somebody up in that cockpit went, my aircraft, right? Whoever was flying. The other guy starts now to answer the phone to try to troubleshoot, and now he's talking to ATC. Let's see what happens next. All right, so they're troubleshooting this thing. Did you want to go keep going, or did you want to go back? We'll be back in a minute, but first, a word from our sponsor. You know, apparently there's only so many times you can slam into an old chair before somebody notices. Flexi Spot saw me absolutely launching myself into my old seat over and over and over again and said, hey, Steve, if you're going to aggressively sit like that, maybe it's time for a chair that can actually handle it. And they were right. So they sent me the Flexi Spot C7 Max, and this thing is no joke. It's got a 3D adjustable headrest, which means I can tilt it to just the right angle, whether I'm working, reading, or plotting my next approach. The backrest, all right, adjusts to your height so it actually fits you, not some average size cardboard cutout. The lumbar support, well, it's not just for your lower back. It supports your sacrum too. I don't even know what that is really, and I didn't even know I needed it, but now I never want to sit without it. <laughs> and the seat cushion, it's memory foam with latex, which means I can sit for 12 hours straight without feeling like I've been in a holding pattern over Newark. Oh, and the armrests, five dimensions. They move in every direction short of, well, a time travel. But that's not all. FlexiSpot also heard my editor was working off a folding table. And yeah, it was just as sad as it sounds, although it was a nice folding table. So they sent over the E7 Plus standing desk, and this thing is a beast. Most standing desks only have two legs. This one has four, which means it's way more stable, even fully extended. We did the shake test, stood on it, raised it to its max height, no wobble. It lifts up to 51.57 inches and supports 540 pounds. You also get a 15-year warranty and a 30-day risk-free return and even special discounts if you're military, a student, or a healthcare worker. I asked my editor what he thought of the desk and he said, and I quote, yeah, I like it. Wow. If you're thinking about upgrading your chair or desk setup, FlexiSpot makes it easy to try it out. They've got a 30-day return policy, so it's totally risk-free. Plus, everything comes with a 10-year warranty, and they'll replace any damaged parts directly. No endless email chains, no hassle. Use my exclusive code C750. Purchase the C7 Max now and enjoy a $50 discount. It's the best time to buy a C7 Max. You can browse the full lineup at the link in the description below. Go take a look. Your back will thank you. And thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Sponsors like this help us to make more content for you. Uh, yes, I have no way not to do it. Now you can hardly hear this guy. Listen how loud it is on the frequencies. That, that's what I have to deal with on a daily basis when I go flying. It's very difficult. You got both headsets on, you get both pilots up there. In their case, they might have a third pilot all listening to the transmissions. They're trying to get out that the Ram air turbine has unlocked and that they're gonna have to come back and fuel jettison uh, here in a minute. But I think it's exceedingly loud up in that cockpit just because that rat is deployed. So basically, uh, the air traffic controller is asking, what are your intentions, right? This is a 
quasi-emergency. It's it's not a traditional emergency where you would lose an engine or there's something wrong with the configuration of the airplane. Basically, the rat deployed, and that's really, really unusual. My understanding in a 787, there, there are three basic reasons, and there's I'm going to throw a fourth in for why a rat could deploy. A total electrical failure, or let me put it this way, a significant electrical failure. And, and I want to hear from you 787 guys, because I've been doing a lot of reading over the last couple months about rat deployment on 787s, and I still can't get a clear answer on, is it a total electrical failure or is it a significant electrical failure? Same thing with the hydraulics. Is it a total hydraulic failure or a significant one? And is, is there some sort of logic in the computer, the airborne logic that would deploy the rat at a certain point uh, in one of those degraded systems? And then the third, of course, that we know from Air Indy 171 is that both engines fail. When both engines fail, uh, the rat will deploy. What's the fourth way? The fourth way is if I, the captain or the first officer, reach over, pull the, the uh, cover off of the ram air turbine button and hit the button, if I hit the button, I can deploy the rat anytime on the ground or in the air. The rat will not deploy on the ground with any of those first things I mentioned to you, only if I hit the button right? Because it's on the ground logic. When there's weight on wheels, it knows it's on the ground. Why won't the rat deploy on the ground if I have a dual engine failure or an electrical failure? Because we don't need it. We don't want it. And every time I got to the gate and I set the parking brake and I chopped the engines for people to get off the airplane, the rat would deploy. So we don't want that to happen. So there's logic on the ground that prevents that from happening. These guys are still airborne though. So they say they're going to have to divert. Before you uh, turn uh, left and uh, fly heading of uh, two, let's left heading is zero two zero. Just going to maintain one thousand compression. I'll send it to two nine nine eight. Now this is one of those interesting things. Air traffic controllers have the authority to declare an emergency on your behalf. Why would they do that? You're just too busy. And they realize that these guys are kind of getting overwhelmed right now. They're trying to run a checklist. They're communicating with the flight attendants who are probably freaking out. And they're trying to communicate with the passengers who are doing the same, right? There's heightened awareness these days on airplanes. And when something goes wrong, people get very nervous. And so they're trying to fly their airplane, communicate with their passengers at the same time. ATC is now going to de declare an emergency emergency for them, which is a good call. And now they can get priority handling back into LAX, but first they have to dump fuel. Give them a turn and a descent. Now they're going to go offshore. They ideally going to be somewhere above 5,000 feet to dump fuel. They're going to do all that. Second 2396, I have an emergency inbound. I'm going to take you faster than it's 50 miles to start. Roger, I'm Martin, point three ninety six. Three ninety seventeen forty three. I have an emergency inbound. I'm going to keep you fast for the for a while now, for about fifteen to twenty months. Okay, so. What air traffic control has to do in a busy airport like LAX is they have to start to create a large space. That's really hard for them to do. Uh, and so what they're doing is they're saying to American and United, I'm going to speed you up. So just guys, just be heads up. I'm going to keep you a little bit faster than normal. Are you okay with that? Because you're going to have to slow down. But if they get buy-in from both of those airplanes, great. That's going to create a gap that they can stick this uh, LATAM airplane in because he's an emergency. French Philly 603 Heavy, SoCal Approach, expect ILS runway 25 left approach. Is 25 left going to be okay? can't hardly hear the transmission from them. And it could be because of the noise of the rat, but I think it's more specifically because the rat creates this really incredible turbulent air outside of the airplane. Uh, and it's just blocking the, the uh, antenna making the transmission. Um, it's, it's hard to hear these guys. And so those are some of the um, I guess, side effects of a rat deployment. Now, can they still fly with the rat deployed? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, what, why don't they just hit the button and retract the rat? The rat doesn't retract. It's only a one-way operation. The rat comes out and it stays out. How do they get the rat to go back in? You got to park at the gate and the maintenance guys have to come out and do an unlocking mechanism and push it back up into place, lock it back into place, close the door, reset the logic in the computer. So all that stuff's got to take place, but it can only be done by a mechanic on the ground. 
Here they come. Friend Chili 603, have you? I see your discretion. You can start calling if you need to. Okay, so they're giving him. I can't hardly hear the guy. They're giving him all sorts of latitude to do whatever they need to do to get this airplane safely on the ground. So here comes Land Chili. 25 left is the long runway on the south side of LAX. Back in 2396, your third visual approach runway 25 left to 220 or greater. If you can track it, that's easy. That's fast. 220 or greater? That's, I'm not sure I'd accept that clearance, but they, they can, so that's good. United 1743, the airport's called the California Martin. Do you have it in place? All right. All right, so both of them accepted 220 or greater. 180 is usually a, an approach speed. Okay, so now you can hear them pretty well. I don't know if it's the orientation of the antenna or not. So that's the space that they're trying to create. So they've got Delta, who's far out, American and United, they're speeding up. They're creating this big, wide gap for Land Chile to come in. I, I don't know that they need it necessarily because the airplane still is flying okay. But in an emergency, they're going to do that just out of an abundance of, of caution. Castle uh, Port, 30 degrees to the right, and 3,000 Delta left. Okay, let's see how this works out for these guys. Heavy fly heading 280 intercept from way 25 left localizer. Grand Chile 603 heavy, fly heading 280 intercept 25 left localizer. Okay, so he's been cleared for the approach. So look at how slow they've got Delta going. Remember they asked American United to go 220? So they gave this guy what they call an S turn, which is just kind of, he's just kind of doing this on final, wasting a little time. And then they cleared him in at 160 knots. So they're, they're spacing everybody out. Wonderful the way they do this. United 1743, contact Los Angeles, tower 120.95. 1743, good luck. And all this is done on the fly, no pun intended. But these air traffic controllers, they're very flexible and just incredible. You're seven miles from GG, cleared ILS runway 25 left approach. So Land Chile now gets cleared for the approach, and they have an uneventful approach and landing on 25 left at LAX. In fact, they don't stay on the runway. They, they taxi off to their gate when they're done. Um, the rat comes out, but it doesn't come out so far that they can't land. It's not longer than the landing gear uh, on purpose, obviously. If you had a rat deployed and you couldn't retract it, you'd want to be able to lower the gear and land and not have that rat somehow hit the ground. Um, and uh, it ends up being that there was a significant electrical failure on climb out with Land Chile. I don't know how significant, there's no details on what happened, but it was significant enough to deploy the rat. Now the rat does three things. It, the rat provides electricity, enough electricity for one radio to work and for one uh, approach, uh, the ILS, uh, an instrument approach system to work. And then most of the instruments on the captain's side, it also provides hydraulic pressure enough for the pilot, in this, in this case, the captain to fly the airplane. And so with those two things being said, it allows you to safely fly an approach and land the airplane. If, and this is worst case, you've had a dual engine failure. In this case, the engines are still running fine. So once they got the systems back on board, maybe they started up their auxiliary power unit and got more power to the aircraft. Maybe that was the cure. 
the rat is still going to be deployed, but it's not going to be supplying the hydraulic and the electrical pressure. There's a logic in the computer system that would kind of block it out unless they had a total electrical or not a total, but a significant or a significant hydraulic failure. So it all turns out really good for them. It has a really good outcome, but it's very unusual that uh, a rat would deploy in flight. And the 787 has had a few of them recently which is kind of a head scratcher. Love to hear from Boeing um, what they think's going on with these rat deployments um, so much these days. Well, uh, again, um, Grands, love you guys. All right, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.